as you continue to work with colors, one of the things that will help you a lot is to build a template or I don't know what to call this, maybe sort of a branded color page or whatever, but build a web page that will contain the colors that you select for your website. And it is much better to put the colors that you want to use into a web page so that you can see those colors being displayed the way that they will be displayed in computer monitors. A lot of people will put their colors into like a Word document or publisher or something like this. They'll put them into some sort of a place and software where that the colors are not being displayed the same way that they are through a computer monitor. Now let me explain that. Color that comes from a computer is what we call additive color. Yes, red is red, green is green, and blue is blue, but there could be subtle differences between what you see on the screen and what you would see if you took a piece of paper and a red crayon and a green crayon and a blue crayon, and if you were to mark those colors on that paper, you would see red, green, and blue, but they may not necessarily be this particular shade or or variety of red, green, or blue. And the reason is, is that colors like on canvas or paper, like we did as children, that is called subtractive color. The only colors that we see are the colors that are reflecting light to our eyes. And we see the color of the wavelength that is being reflected to us. But in a computer, the computer requires the light that comes from the computer monitor. It requires that that light be present in order for us to be able to see these colors. So it's a totally different approach to creating light. This is called additive colors. So your color, if you want to see the way that color is going to actually look on your website, then you need to build something like what you see on the screen here. What I have is a web page that I've created HTML5 and we just call it working with colors. I've created some embedded styles here in this page. So you can see the styles right here. And this is the head section up on line three and the head section ends on line 50. And what I've done is to create just some square boxes. They're 100 pixels wide. You can see that right here. This is where I define the box. It's 100 pixels wide, 100 pixels high and I gave it a slight gray border and I want the text in it to be aligned and I have put them into columns that are 25% of the width of the page and I floated them left so that they'll come up in display on the screen just the way they are doing here. So we come down to the what goes inside of each of these blocks what I've done is I've created some classes, hex1, hex2, hex3, and so on, and then RGB1 and so on down through RGB10. So we're still continuing to look at hex color values and RGB color values. And what I've done is to fill out five of these boxes for you with just some fairly common colors. And you can see here that I've coded the H1 here for red, and this one here for green, and that's blue. And on blue, I had to also add the color attribute in here because the color, the black text on that blue background doesn't show up very well. So I simply changed the color of the font to white. And so we have the cyan and the yellow colors here. And coming on down to the RGB, it's exactly the same color, but it's in RGB values. And I want you to get practice in being able to type these values. One of the common mistakes that I see students making is that they'll have a, a problem and the color won't show up. And normally what that is when it involves color is that here where they're typing in the six values for the hex color value, they'll only type five of those colors, five of those characters. Now there are times where you can get away with just typing three. And you see that right here on, what is this line? This is line 30. And the reason we can do this right here is because I want the text to be white. Well, normally you would have, for white, you would have six Fs. 
But one of the shortcuts that CSS allows us is that if you've got characters that are all identical, then CSS will let you just shortcut that down to three characters. Now I left out the hex 6 through 10, and that would be for these values over here in this column, and then RGB 6 through 10, that is for these over here. And you're going to be filling those out as a learning exercise. Come down to the body section, and you can see how I created this. First of all, I just have my H1 header. And then after that, I created that first set of boxes. They have a class of box, so that builds the class. And then I added the second class called hex1, hex2, hex3. And that's how I'm able to put a different color in each of these boxes. And by the way, if you're not up to speed on this, this is the way that you would code in multiple classes into one of your elements. So we have the hex 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then over here we have RGB 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then again there is a third column for hex and a third column for RGB, and then of course the links down here at the bottom. So what I'm suggesting for you to do here is to, I'm giving you two links, one is for a website at a place that I just love, it's called 0to255.com, if you click that, It'll bring you here to this place, and you could, if you wanted to, just type in here to select a color, and it would take you to those colors. Cancel that. Or you can just pick a color in here that you like. So maybe you like that. And it's going to take you to this page, and what you're going to see is every shade of, of that color that there is. These are all colors that are within this one color range, and what you can see here are the actual hex values on these. So if I wanted this one right here, I would click it, left click it one time, and notice it says copied. And then I could come into my code over here. I could come to some place where I wanted to put that hex value, maybe perhaps right here for this one for hex six. I'll just type that control V to paste that in. I want to make sure that I have the hash symbol at the start and the semicolon at the end. And we'll go back to our color page over here. And now when I hit Control S, then we'll see that color pop up in right here in 3, 2, 1. There's the value. But we have to put the color itself up here into the H, the hex 6 CSS rule. So I'm going to type background. And there is that color again, that hex value. But remember, I have to put the hash symbol on it. Control S in 3, 2, 1. And there we go. So what I'd like for you to do is to use the website here at 0 to 255 to just search for other colors. Let your imagination just play around here. It's something like maybe E3, E3, E3. And what do we get? Ah, sort of grays. And so you could pick one of those if you wanted to. In these first two columns, I just pick the colors that are standard colors. But I want you to pick colors that you like and the colors that you think go well together. And you can put them over here. Now, on the 0 to 255 website, it's going to give you these hex values. Click on it again, then you will see that the, the number pops up and you're able to copy that. But what about getting the RGB value? Well, that's what this second link here. There's a great hex to RGB converter right here at Rapid Table's website. I, I just love this. I use it all the time. You come in here, and so we could paste that value for that hex in right here. And I'm going to click Convert. And so there you see, there's the RGB values. So I could come down to this RGB right here and type background R. G, B, and that would be 207, comma, 43, comma, 207. And be sure you put the semicolon at the end. Control S to save that. And I'm going to come back over here, and you can see that I have that value here. And of course, I'd have to come down and put the color right here between those closing and opening div tags. I'd have to put that in right here in order for that number 
to show up there. But this is going to give you experience with finding colors that work well together, putting those colors into some CSS style rules, and then coming down and working inside of these div blocks here that create these little boxes. It's going to give you experience at actually typing this in. You're going to forget things like you're going to forget the hashtag. You're going to forget the semicolon at the end. You may forget the comma between the values on the RGB. This is going to give you enough practice that you can get more comfortable in typing in these kind of values.